On today's episode of Locked On Avalanche, the playoffs are about a month away, Mr. Sullivan. Do we have any preferences on who we would like to face for the Colorado Avalanche? We'll talk about that new episode of Locked On Avalanche coming up next. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the Locked On Avalanche Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thank you for tuning in, making it your first listen of the day. That is always appreciated. Make sure you're following us on social media outlets, LOP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter X, Locked On Avalanche on Instagram and threads, questions, comments, concerns, and opinions, LockedOnAvalanche at gmail.com, and make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel as well. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live. And if you're subscribing to things, why not subscribe to our subtext as well? Link to that is in the show notes below. And when you do, you chat with Kyle and I one-on-one. Give us your opinions on everything Avalanche, which we share on this very podcast. We're going to be doing that a little bit later, sir. If you're over on uh, YouTube, it's bracket season. The, the, the NCAA tournament is in full swing. I'm sure everybody's br- brackets are busted by now with that Kentucky game that just finished up. Uh, how far did you have th- have them going? Oh, I had them going to another round or two, but I think I had them in the eight. I think I had them in the in the elite eight, and that was about it. But uh, yeah, so but what we're going to do is a little bit different. Have some fun. Why not? We're doing doing a Disney edition, and we got Disney movies on one side, Pixar movies on the other. What is the final four, and who? reigns victorious for disney movies that will be later where we're gonna start kyle is uh with some specific avalanche stuff and that's involving uh the playoffs they are just almost exactly a month away and anything is up in the you you alluded to before you even hit record how it's you know nobody's secured anything yet no as far as like playoff spots we we know we have we know who the players are and stuff like that but as far as uh, you know, getting that letter next to your name. Uh, the only thing, <laughs> and I responded to you by saying, like, the only thing that's been set in stone is Chicago can't make it. Yeah. Other than that, it's free reign for everybody. But yeah, go ahead. No, it, it's it's crazy to think. Like you, you say you're a month away from the playoffs, but it felt like last year we had a whole month to carry around with our social media name, having that X next to it. And then they changed the whole app to say X, but it's, it, it's, it's crazy. Like it's, it feels like the season's almost over and it feels like nothing is resolved. And especially when you look at that central, nothing is resolved. It's a, it's a three horse race to win that central wide open, <clears throat> wide open. So because of that, <clears throat> excuse me, do we have preferences? Um, are, are there teams that we would rather face in round one, than opposed to others and and you know because nobody has anything short up right now it is pretty wide open on who you could face this is not who was it It was tampa toronto where you knew those two teams were facing off in the first round like in november from from last year i'm talking about It's, it's not like that right now you you have an opportunity to win the division or finish second or third which those two teams would play each other in in the division and that's true for you, for uh, Winnipeg and Dallas. And then you have, you know, you bring in the wildcards and stuff like that. So I'll just throw it out to you first. Like, is there a preference that you have on, on who the Avalanche you would like to see them facing off in round one? Yes, my wonderful friend. I do have a preference. And if you would ask me this question about a month ago, it mm-hmm. would have been different. And just for fun, I have right here, if the season ended today, what this playoff would look like. In the Western Conference, yeah, the Avalanche will be drawing Dallas. You have the yeah. Jets drawing the Predators, Oilers and Kings, Canucks and Golden Knights. Okay. That's that's how everything will look if the season today. ended today. Sure, that is the most favorable matchup for the Colorado Avalanche. Dallas, I I would prefer if I can't get the Blues, I would rather have Dallas. I do not want that. You know, I'm almost of the mindset where I do not want that number one spot in the central where Winnipeg, they have Winnipeg winning it. 
Yeah. Because they draw Nashville. Yeah. Nashville is white hot right now. They are playing with severe fire. They are. You cancel a U2 concert in the sphere and you make a dynasty hockey team. So the Nashville Predators are just playing incredible right now. So I really don't want to see the Avalanche face a team playing that well going into the playoffs. And then mm-hmm. you you look back at last year and that Seattle bounce, it's almost the same kind of fire and mentality with this Nashville team as Seattle last year. It's a very good point. <clears throat> and, and we say it all the time. You want to be playing your best hockey going into the playoffs. That's exactly what Nashville is doing right now. Now you still have, you know, a handful of games remaining. So can they keep keep that up? Um, I, I mean, God, what are their their last ten? They're eight zero and two, and if not for a couple bounces, they they could have been winners of what 15, 14, 15 in a row. Yeah, I think they're twelve zero and two as it stands right now for the last fourteen. So yeah, they're 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 on a roll. Um, I'll say this, like the, the way that I, that I look at this is it's not, it, I, I, I'm right now feeling really confident in this Avalanche team. So I'm confident in who they go up against really no matter what, with the exception of Winnipeg. Mm. Uh, if, if Dallas ends up winning this division and that's your matchup, that I think is going to be a dogfight for the Avalanche. And you just look at the matchups that they've had with them uh, over the course of this season, it's been a challenge. It has been a struggle. And I know that, you know, and, and I say the flip of, of with with Dallas, how they've played Dallas well, that doesn't automatically translate into you're just going to take that series, you know, scot-free and away we go. But you're right. I think the matchup between who's in your division, between Dallas and uh, Winnipeg, you, you would prefer – a Dallas matchup you would now go ahead and we mentioned that I remember after the Winnipeg game this year there was a lot of the talk like I can't wait for a seven game series and we both said we don't want that it's it's that's it just does not a seven game series it feels like a cage match like you're locked in there and there's no way out like the Nash uh, the Dallas series it feels like you have a better chance again this is if the Blues just they're not in the mix, but mm-hmm. I just, I don't, I do not want Winnipeg or Nashville. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'd be okay. Like Nashville. Yeah. They're, 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 they're going to go into the playoffs confident no matter what uh, Vegas. I'm um, bring that on. Ooh, please bring it on. I don't care. I, you know, they're, they're going to get everybody back for game one round one. We all know that if they don't, it'd be a minor miracle. But that that's the stuff that I want is, you, you know, you bounce them. You bounce the, the the champions in the first round, just like you were the year before. Um, I, I have such a, a, a disdain for that team. I want to be responsible for knocking them out. So I welcome that that matchup. Absolutely. Without a doubt. You know, you want to you want to be the best. Go be go beat the former best, even though they're not at their best this year. Clearly, if they're going to be the second wild card, but still, they have the title, and it's theirs until you get or, or knocked out. Have the Avalanche be that team that knocks them out. Would love it. I would, and I don't disagree with anything you say there. But after last year's loss to Seattle, I just kind of want to get over the first round. Sure, I just want to. Really- I I, I kind of want just a favorable. I don't want to tell the the world our story and catch eyeballs in the first round. I just want to survive. Then we could start knocking down the Edmontons, the Vegases, the Vancouver's, the mm-hmm. like it, you could start, you know, taking down names and putting up banners there, but I just want to get through the first round because last year you thought with how resilient this team was through injury that maybe they could just all rally together and they didn't. And you had the Nachushkin exit and it was just a mess in last year. I just kind of want to get through, get to round two, and then start taking names. Uh, threw this out to the subtext people, and um, here's some responses from them. This is from Easton. He says, Dallas or Nashville? I like those matchups. I think the app system uh, just play better into theirs. So, yeah, he doesn't seem to be too afraid of, of Nashville right now. So, 
we'll, we'll see. I mean, I think it's the, the thing of like, if the playoffs started today, Nashville's the hottest team. Mm-hmm. We still got a handful of games to go. And regardless of how those games go, Nashville gets in. They're still going to be confident because they've been playing their best hockey as of late. But, you know, do, does that, man, like you're right with the whole Seattle thing. And is this, you know, if that's your matchup, is this you know last year version 2.0? I don't know. We'll we'll, ha- we'll have to see how the season finishes up for for Nashville. But yeah, that's no denying they're one of the hottest teams right now. And then everything, every move that McFarland made that we just talked about yesterday is all for naught. And if you get bounced in the first round again, mm. it's it, a completely different story. Wrapping up this season and a lot of question marks going into next year. Joe, he's with me. Uh, I'd love to pull Vegas and get it out of the way. Yeah, man. Bring it. Uh, he said, let Nashville be another team up. <laughs> so, sure. Um, yeah. Uh, wow. It would be, it, it would be nice. I'm surprised you're, you're not all for this right now because I know you, you have a, a, a hatred of Vegas too. I, bring them on. Yeah. I, <laughs> my, I think my hatred of Vegas is secondary to my hunger for winning. And I really just I I want to get past the first round more than anything. <laughs> um, Hegan <clears throat> says if the Minnesota Wild can make it, uh, I would want to face them. McKinnon Agreed. owns the Wild, and it would be the latest stressful, most likely matchup for the least stressful, most likely matchup for us. I love it. Yeah. So, and, and those are the teams that are kind of on the outside looking in, but still in it. So, and you mentioned St. Louis, so that that's another team that's. Um, could potentially be in it um i don't think we have <clears throat> any more thoughts for let me see if let's see no and i yeah, agree I minnesota care. would okay. be favorable and st louis but it's also <laughs> you talked about like keeping that momentum going mm-hmm. when it comes to nashville same with minnesota and st louis you don't know what they're going to look like it's going to be a crazy yeah. month everybody just buckle up it's going to it Listen to this episode a month from now and li- see how the picture changes. We're in I'll, for a ride. I'll, I'll end it with this. Um, if Minnesota or St. Louis were to get in, then that means they had a fantastic final month of their season while the teams above them faltered. Yeah, and they become Nashville. It, right. And yeah. that's what they want. So if they make it in, they are hot. And is yep. that what you want to face too? So just keep that in the back of your mind if that does happen. We'll see how it plays out one month to go. It's going to get exciting. <clears throat> but Avs do have some uh, games that they got to finish up. They are playing Columbus for the first time all year in mid March, late March. We're in the 20s of March. Again, I love the NHL and how they do their uh, their their scheduling. Let's talk about that game and we'll do that next. First, we are going to talk about Indeed. No matter how the last game went, anytime you take the field, you've got a shot at greatness. Give your team the best shot at winning by recruiting with more MVPs at Indeed. If you're hiring, then you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. And Indeed is the only job site where you you are guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have requirements, or else you don't pay. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process. Find great talent through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match assessments and virtual interviews. And with Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates with resumes on Indeed that match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you only pay for quality applications that meet your must-have requirements. So start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. The offer is valid through March 31st. Go to Indeed.com slash locked on. Claim your $75 credit before March 31st. That is Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. If you need to hire, then you need Indeed. Avalanche and Columbus Blue Jackets back at Ball Arena. So uh, first time these teams are matching up. 
Nathan McKinnon, obviously, whenever he's playing at home, can he continue that home point streak, which has been going all season long now? Wayne Gretzky is in sight. He has his overall point streak going. And when you're going up against a team like Columbus, you have to feel confident that both of those things are going to continue. Columbus, is we're, we're at the point of the season where, and how you've been playing lately, where these are the games you have to win. You cannot leave points on the board against teams like Columbus because Columbus is playing for number one overall draft pick right now. Oh, You know what I mean? So this has got to be two points, no ifs, ands, or buts. What do you think? Columbus is last in the Metro, and that that should tell you something. Columbus does not rank higher than 22nd in team stats in any category. They are 31st in the power play. There is not one single stat that jumps off the page when it comes to Columbus Blue Jackets hockey. Their leading scorer in the past five games when it comes to goals, Alex Nylander, who was traded from Pittsburgh in February, Mm -hmm. and he spent a lot of time down at Wilkes-Barre, and he has three goals. Miko has six in five games. So Mm -hmm. Columbus does not come into Ball Arena with a lot. And again, I agree with you. This is not a game that you kind of coast through and let them get some kind of advantage and walk out with two points. This is unex. This is it's. There's no excuse for dropping this one, and it should not happen. The Avalanche should roll, and let this be my 10, 10 goal spot. Give me a ten here. <laughs> um, I am seeing the only thing. What did you say that that Columbus is not? They are thirty first in power play, twenty second in penalty kill, twenty eighth in face off percentage, twenty four, uh, twenty fourth in goals okay. for, thirtieth in goals against. Okay, so well goals for. Let me see. Oh, this is for. Let me see all situations. Okay. Five on five, they're not bad. <clears throat> five on five, they're actually eleventh uh, in the league. When you go to all situations, they drop down to 24th. Yeah. That is crazy. <laughs> that, that is, that is, uh, that, that, that's rough going for a team that when you are scratching the surface of top 10 for five on five and then for all your situations, you are dropping to the bottom. That just, that, that speaks volumes. So, um, you know, and, and you feel for guys like Johnny Gaudreau. But yeah, because he's such a good guy. He's such a good player. <clears throat> he went there. He wanted to go to the East Coast. I think he wanted I think it was the Devils that he was trying to go to where he really wanted to go. Couldn't make it work. So he goes to, to Columbus and knowing they're going to be a bad team. He, he's not going there thinking like I'm going to be the savior for this team on day one. I know it's going to be a process, but I'm willing to buy into that process. And it's been a disaster since he got there. And it's not f- for the, his fault. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. We know, you know, the the hiring of um, what's his name that I'm. I'm uh, no, I uh, from, from I Toronto. I'm, I'm blanking on his name. Whatever. Babcock, Mike Babcock. Babcock. Mike Babcock. You know, that thing was a disaster. Um, and then, you know, you, you fire your GM recently. It's, it's just been from top to bottom problems um they have some good prospects but they're still young they're still raw they're not at that stage yet but you you would you just thought columbus was going to be a little bit further ahead and it's the same thing year after year and elvis versus leakins is 12 15 and 8 with a 900 save percentage that's how good it's going in columbus right now i mean you look at when you have a team that's bad, <clears throat> and I know that, again, plus minus is what it is, but stuff like that, when it's that bad, it stands out. Mm-hmm. So as good as Johnny Goudreau is, um, and he's doing the best that he possibly can, in 69 games played, he has 51 points. You know, he's better than that. He's better than that, but he's a minus 22. Uh, Adam Fantilli, young, really good player that they have up and coming, <clears throat> 49 games played. 27 points minus 21. Um, 
yeah, uh, <laughs> it, 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 there's, there's, you can't polish the turd here, Kyle. It, like it, it, it's a team that you as going in opposite directions, obviously, and how things stand right now. Again, this is a, a game where if this was two months ago, we'd be saying like, we don't, you feel confident, you feel comfortable, but you got no idea what avalanche team is going to hit the ice. Recent avalanche is you feel confident that this team will jump out quickly, impose their will, do what they got to do, throw a ton of pucks on net. I'm expecting you, you could be touching 40 shots on goal in this game if the Avalanche do what they're supposed to do. Columbus cannot hang with you in any facet of the game. So prove it early on. Get it out of the way. Get that first goal. Don't let them get the first goal. And away you go. It really should be, uh, I don't want to say easy going because hockey is a tough sport, but you should feel comfortable going into this game. If Tortorella was the coach of the Blue Jackets, he'd healthy scratch the entire roster. <laughs> Tortorella has been the coach of the Blue Jackets, one of his 13 head coaching positions that he's had. Um, but I don't dislike the guy, but just wherever he goes, just seems like it, he just blows things up. <laughs> um, <clears throat> he was in Columbus for a while. Yeah, Long, he was. Longer than I thought, longer than I expected him to be. So, um, yeah, I think people are feeling pretty good about this one. <clears throat> and, it, you know, it's a Friday game. I always like winning Friday games because – just makes your weekend a little bit better. When you lose the Friday night game, it's just, just a bad start to your weekend and, and everything. Then you get Pittsburgh on Sunday. That is true. That is true. So let's have a, a solid weekend. Um, all right. One more thing that we got for today, a little bit of fun we're going to have, and that is because it is uh, NCAA bracket, bracketology, as they call it. The uh, tournament is in full swing. We're going to do one of our own. And we're going to do a Disney edition. And we got our uh, subtext people to chime in on this, too. They went crazy with this thing. They seem to love it. So we're going to talk about that coming up next. First, we're going to hear from FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because I'm sure everybody's got them already. Uh, with FanDuel, and they let you bet on every game of the tournament, whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 in bonus bets to use on the point spread. Money lines, you can even pick who's going to win it all, which we haven't done a fan duel read in a little while. So I don't think people know who we have as our our selections they might know yours because every day is probably know who your favorite team is but i'm guessing that's who you picked oh it is going to be the auburn tigers war eagle kyle is a auburn tigers fan i happen to i i like the university of michigan uh who is nowhere near this tournament um so i'm i'm going in with my my co-host here and we are both going auburn why not why not? Let's do it. What Bruce is it? Pearl. War, Let's go. War, war, war. Is it roll tide? No, 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 no. <laughs> Had to do it. Had no. to do it. Uh, yeah. So I, I am going with Kyle in solidarity. Uh, let's go. Let's go Auburn. So just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until the Auburn Tigers, hopefully cut down the nets. All right, let's dive into this uh, bracket challenge, the Disney edition. Uh, why not? Let's have some fun before uh, the the weekend starts. We got it's it up Friday, there baby. on, on, yeah, on uh, YouTube if you're watching. We'll go through these quickly. We'll get to the, uh, the, the subtext people as well. And if you are watching on uh, YouTube, as you can see, on the left side is all Disney movies. On the right side is all Pixar movies. So your final is obviously going to be uh, one Disney movie matched up with one Pixar movie. So left-hand side, first uh, matchup, Lion King versus Tarzan. Lion King, hands down, no doubt about it. I wish I could say that. I I, I like Tarzan more. Wow. I do. That, that, that is enough. That's, that's... Okay. Uh, Princess and the Frog and Lilo and Stitch. What do you got for that one? 
Lilo and Stitch. I agree with you. I love Princess and the Frog. I think it's a good movie. I Lilo and Stitch has some charm appeal to it, so I'm going to go go with that one. Uh, that one is Tangled and Big Hero Six. What do you think for that? Tangled. It is so underrated. See, both of these are very underrated. Yeah, they are both. This is uh, this is a tough one. I really like Big Hero Six, and and it's not nothing against Tangled. Great yeah. movie. One of my daughter's favorites, but uh, I just like the superhero aspect of Big Hero 6, so I'm going with that. Frozen versus Moana. This is another tough one. What do you got for this? Moana makes me cry every time. Does it really? Every time. <clears throat> Man, th- so tough, but I think I got to go with Moana, too. Yeah. I do. I ha- I got to go with that. Aladdin versus Hercules. Who are you liking that one? Aladdin. Yes, definitely Aladdin. Uh, Little Mermaid versus Pocahontas. What do you like in that one? Pocahontas. Mm, this is a good one. This is a pretty good matchup. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go with you on that one. I think I'm going to go with you Pocahontas on that. Uh, Mulan and Zootopia. Mulan. I love Zootopia, dude. I, I, that is a, my family a, does as well, but Mulan. Great, just great, great movie. Uh, so I'm going Zootopia. Um, and on the bottom of that is Beauty and the Beast. And the one that gets cut off, you can't really see it, um, is uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas. What do you got for that? This is the hardest one so far, but I'm going to have to go Beauty and the Beast. But Nightmare Before Christmas is timeless. I'm going Beauty and the Beast. I am not a huge fan of Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, well, we watch I am, it. I, I know that, and Christmas. I, no, it's one of those things where it's on, like I watch it. In, in Halloween time, it gets you in the Halloween and Christmas. It's it's it's, it's a, that's the good thing about it is it's you know both of those holidays in one movie. I don't know, man. I I know there's a lot of people who who are probably gonna hate me for that, but I just I'm not huge into it. So I gotta go Beauty and the Beast with that one. So, um, all right, do you want to finish off the Disney side, or are we switching over to the Pixar side? What do you want to do? Let Let's finish out Disney. Okay. So uh, I have Lion King versus Lilo and Stitch. I will go with Lion King there. And I'm going Tarzan over Lilo and Stitch. All right. And I have Big Hero 6 and Moana, and I will go Big Hero 6 there. I'm taking Moana over Tangled. Uh, I got Aladdin versus Pocahontas. Definitely Aladdin. I agree. And I have Zootopia and uh, Beauty and the Beast. I'm going Zootopia. Beauty and the Beast. Um, so then I got Lion King and Big Hero 6. Man, that is tough, but I think I got to go Lion King. And I got so Tarzan Lion- Moana, and it's Tarzan. So Tarzan's one of your final four, and Lion King is one of my final four. And then I got... Uh, oh, I'm trying to do these. Uh, so Aladdin. Aladdin, Aladdin and Zootopia... I'm going to go Zootopia. And I have Aladdin and Beauty and the Beast, and I get Beauty and the Beast. All right. So on the Disney side, for two of the final four, I got Lion King and Zootopia, and you have... Tarzan and Beauty and the Beast. Tarzan and Beauty and the Beast. Man, how about that? That is crazy. Yeah. All right. Picks our side. Uh, up versus Brave. What do you got? Oh, up. Definitely. Brave is good. Brave, Brave is, good is great. Uh, but I'm going to go up. Uh, like why would they do this toy story one versus toy story two this is impossible literally impossible but i could quote toy story one yeah. beginning to end okay so, that's so what you're it's, i it's t- it's all my childhood toy yeah, story one definitely toy story one definitely uh coco versus cars coco coco definitely definitely coco toy story three Versus the that's good dinosaur. Answer. That's your answer. Toy Story three. Toy Story three. Yeah, the good dinosaur is is a good movie. I know it got like pan, but Toy Story three, if you ask me, is the best Toy Story movie. Absolutely. If if you don't get a little weepy at the end Ooh. of that movie, you are not. You're an AI bot. Is what yep. you are. That movie is the end of that movie is incredible. Um. All right, Ratatouille and a Bug's Life. I love a Bug's Life. I do too, but I love Ratatouille a lot more. Okay. So I'm going Ratatouille. Finding Nemo, Inside Out. Finding Nemo. 
That's a tough one, but Inside Out is maybe one of my favorite Pixar movies. So that's Inside Out for me. Monsters Inc. and Car. Oh, the other. So the other one that must be Cars Two, because mm. this one here, the one against Coco, was Cars. Doesn't matter because we picked Coco. Um, so Monsters Inc. versus the first Cars. Monsters Inc. Easily Monsters Inc. Uh, Incredibles versus Wally. Incredibles. Uh, it's, this is a really. This is one of the tougher ones, but I gotta go Wally. Oh, gotta go Wally. Love me some Wally. I wish they'd do a sequel to that one. So good. Um, all right. So I got, we got, I think we both have Up versus Toy Story. What it is got? Toy Story. <laughs> yep. Toy Story. And then uh, I think we both have Coco versus Toy Story 3. I'm going Coco. That's, again, Coco is so good. So good. But I have to go Toy Story 3. On that, I, I, I don't like that matchup because I hate Coco yeah. exiting that early. Um, then we got well, I have Ratatouille and Inside Out, and I'm gonna go Inside Out with that one. I got you Bugs have, Life, Finding Nemo, and okay. I'm going Bugs Life. And then Monsters, I have Monsters Inc. and Wally, another very, very tough one. I'm gonna go Monsters Inc. I got Monsters Inc. Incredibles, and it's Incredibles. Uh, and then to get their final four teams here, I got Toy Story 1 versus Toy Story 3. Oh, my God. I got I to gotta put the original in. I'm yeah, going to go Toy Story 1. And that's where I'm going to end up because I got Toy Story going against Coco, and it's Toy Story. And then I got Inside Out versus Monsters, Inc. And I am going to go with Inside Out. And I have Bugs Life versus Incredibles, and it's going to be Incredibles. So then uh, in the final four, I got Lion King versus Zootopia. I'm going to put Lion King in the final on the Disney side. And I got Tarzan, Beauty and the Beast, and I'm going to put Tarzan. Wow, you love Tarzan that way. It's beautiful it's... animation and Phil Collins. What Phil else Collins. do you want? I mean, Phil Collins, that kind of does put it over the top, I guess, yeah. Um, so I got the Lion King and it'll go up against Toy Story One or Inside Out, and it's gonna be Toy Story One for me. Yeah, it's gonna be uh Toy Story One versus Tarzan for me. So my finals Lion King versus Toy Story One. Gotta have Toy Story, the first Toy Story winning this whole thing. You got Tarzan, Tarzan versus Toy Story. Yep, and it's Toy Story. And it's Toy Story. So we both go with a Pixar movie. Yep. Okay. All right. And, and and if I had Toy Story 3 beating Toy Story 1, I think Toy Story 3 might have taken the entire thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very tough. But, you know, yeah. honestly, depending on the day, Toy Story 2 might have ran the bracket. Could have. It's Could've. a really good story. It's all about the matchups. All about yep. the matchups. Uh, I want to get to some people over on subtext because they, they love this. Tanya, uh, she's got Big Hero 6 versus Aladdin and Toy Story versus Finding Nemo. Um, and Big Hero 6, let's see, versus Nemo, Nemo for the win. So she picks mm -hmm. Finding Nemo. And this was done a few years ago, this graphic. So I know there's not some newer ones that are, are not uh, in the mix if, here. But... Yeah, if Onward was on here, I, it would win everything Onward for me. so good. So good. Oh my god. Uh Vargar. <clears throat> let's see. He's got man, Vargar. I love it. he goes, he goes all out. He puts his favorite characters in, he puts his favorite songs in. Um, he's got Ratatouille and Coco and then Nightmare Before Christmas. So he's probably hating me right now. Um, <laughs> versus Frozen. That's a Ooh. solid final four. Um, but he's got the winner of the entire thing, Ratatouille. That scene at the end where the food critic takes the bite and flashes back to his childhood makes him tear up every time. I'm right there with you, Burger. Yeah, man. It's a great movie. Uh, Joe says Lion King, Mulan, Toy Story 2, and mm. A Bug's Life. He's got A Bug's Life in there, too. And he says A Bug's Life by far is my favorite. But the win has got to go to The Lion King. Yeah, what do you, what do you but, say to that, sir? Bugs Life is underrated, and I'm right there with you. That's a great yeah. pick, and but no fault with Lion King. Yeah. Um, I think we got, let's see, Easton's got Big Hero 6, and then he says most underrated film because of Frozen timing. Uh, Mulan, 
Toy Story and The Incredibles. His final is Big Hero 6 and Toy Story. Winner, Toy Story. It's just a classic. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Electrician Ziggy uh, says, I don't need a Final Four. Tangled is winning the cup after steamrolling Monsters, Inc. in the championship game. <laughs> I, I still remember seeing Tangled in the theaters, uh, walking out saying this is an, an absolute classic. So I'm right yeah. there with you. Yeah, man, that's that's good stuff. Uh, it, it's good music, too, in that one, which shouldn't surprise anybody. Just beautiful animation. Yeah. And then Keegan says his final four is Lion King, Zootopia, Cars, and Coco. His final is Zootopia versus Cars. Mm. And then I love this little added thing he puts in the end. Cars wins it by an avalanche. Life is a highway. Yeah, like the, the first Cars movie is okay. The ones that three is good, two is horrible. Two is just it's weird. Three is pretty good because he's like retiring and he's getting old and it's all like new stuff. So that's pretty cool. But I think that's a massive upset to have Cars winning the entire thing. Wow. That, but it's also, there's not a loser in this bunch. Like maybe the Good you know Dinosaur. I, it's not horrible. The Good Dinosaur, I don't think it's horrible. But, you know. You, you that's the beauty of this is you can make an argument for so many movies on here and you know and what? you saw it you saw it everybody's right and everybody's a champion today exactly Every, everybody gets a prize in this bracket all right that is going to wrap it up hopefully you had some fun with that because uh why not take a little break from avalanche stuff and we'll get into the ncaa spirit uh but we're back to avalanche stuff tomorrow because let's get kyle his 10 goals i need it let's That's, do this thing once and for all 1995 was the last time they they did it it was against san jose so come on let's do it all right, that's going to wrap it up for today. We will be back on Monday to discuss this game against Columbus and then the Sunday game against Pittsburgh. So we'll do that next week. But for now, thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Here, let's get all this stuff out of here and show people our wonderful faces before we end this show. Uh, he is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli. This is the Locked On Avalanche podcast. We'll see you guys Monday. Enjoy the weekend. Go Toy Story. Onward.